welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research Education Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart. I'm here today with Mike Zinda, who is formerly in the Molecular Biology Department. Glad to have him back. So welcome back. Thank you. So tell me what you did here at Vanderbilt when you were here. Uh, I worked in uh, Bubba Singleton's lab, uh, working on dictyostelium and uh, identifying three novel genes at the time. Okay. So what did you do after that? Oh, so after that, I uh, moved on and did a short postdoc at Princeton University. Okay. Um, well, I figured out what I wanted to do with my life. Um, so I got to meet uh, people in industry uh, through my wife, who was working at a small biotech. Decided that that's what I wanted to do and uh, took on a new uh, role where I moved to Eli Lilling Company to become a postdoc there okay. uh, in the cancer department. All right. So what do you do now? Uh, so right now I'm actually in between jobs. Yesterday was my last day uh, okay. at AstraZeneca, uh, where I worked for 16 and a half years. Okay. Um, so now I'm moving on to a biotech, uh, where I'm leading up the R&D organization. Okay, so tell us about your previous, well, your previous role, I guess it was yeah. very so I, previous. Yeah, I led bioscience organization for oncology. Okay. Uh, so it's roughly 76 people that delivered new targets into the portfolio, uh, helped find compounds to bring into man, okay. uh, and helped understand how to use those compounds uh, and what the, the right patients were. Okay, great. So uh, how is that a good fit for you and your skill set? Yeah, so I think... I really like to work on multiple projects and a number of different things, um, and I think it really uh, kind of fit with uh, what I love to do. So the role was really overseeing about 40 different projects and all the people doing that work, okay. um, and really getting to know those people and work with them. So tell me about, I guess, tell me about what your new role will be and what you'll yeah. be doing. Uh, so my new role is I'll be uh, leading all the research and development uh, for a new startup company uh, that just began. So I'm the fourth person in the company. Uh, hope to be about 20 people by the end of the year. Okay, so I'm sure you had to do some networking to get that job, some of the career yeah. uh, transitions. Tell me about that transition and, and sort of applying for a new job. Yeah, so I think um, for this level of a job, the transition is really um, a number of people externally had recommended me to uh, uh, basically a recruiter uh, that was working for the company. Uh, we engaged with that uh, recruiter and then uh, started the interview process uh, probably about nine months ago, in fact. Okay. Um, and uh, worked through several different interviews, uh, had them call and talk to several different references from my past, um, and I am, got that job uh, uh, in the last three weeks. Okay, so tell me about your networking strategies. You clearly have a network, so. Yeah, so I guess the networking strategies kind of fall in a number of different ways. Something is, is just maintaining those uh, relationships that you've had for a long time, be it with previous graduate students that you worked with when you were at Vanderbilt, uh, be it with uh, other people that have come and left from your, your department uh, or where you've worked over time, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, networking when you're at professional meetings uh, to identify and, and, uh, and find new people uh, that you might want to interact with. But it's really, I think, more about creating that interaction and, and having something real there. Just meeting someone once isn't really a network. I guess it's actually having to do more work and, and really maintain that. Call those people up, see them at the different meetings, and spend some time uh, to make sure that you can uh, continue to have that interaction. Okay, good. You worked in industry for many years. Tell me some of the differences that you noticed between academia and industry. Um, I guess, yeah, some of the differences is it really you're not going to be working on the same thing probably for an extended period of time. Um, I guess in a few cases you might have a project in an area of biology that's going to be consistent for anywhere from a three to five year period, but in general you're usually working on a number of different areas uh, and they can be very divergent from one another um, versus at least at the time where I was in academia uh, and, and the lab that I'm still in is still working on dictyostelium. Uh, still looking to identify uh, new genes that help drive the development of that organism. Um, okay. And I think the other thing is, again, managing people uh, in a different way, um, helping them grow in their career. Uh, that's more similar to, I guess, what you would be doing when you were uh, a professor. Okay, good. Um, so a current graduate student or postdoc is interested in entering industry or even biotech. What are some of the pieces of advice you would give them? I think... Uh, Two things. One is, you know, think about how applicable the research you're doing is to the areas that you want to go into. Um, if you want to go into industry, uh, you want to be in oncology, or if you want to be in um, inflammation or the other areas, is you know, find labs that have research that's relevant to what's going on in that industry setting. It'll make you much more uh, amenable to moving into that, um, and, and a much more uh, marketable person uh, as you move uh, into that career field. Uh, the other is meeting people when you're at the meetings, the professional meetings, making sure you're presenting, getting posters out there, uh, and talking to and, and meeting a number of people. Okay. Um, they all have their own networks, and so that's the way to, to help identify and, and meet people and get your resume in front of somebody. Okay, cool. So in this job transition, tell me a little bit about your work-life balance. Um, I guess my, my work-life balance has always ebbed and waned uh, throughout, uh, throughout my career. Um, 
but I guess it really comes down to there's different times where you have to really buckle down and there's just a lot of work that has to be done. Um, but there's other times where you can kind of pull back a little bit and, and, and try to maintain that work-life balance. So I think it's really up to the individual and what they love to do. Um, I guess it's not necessarily too bad of work if you really like what you're doing, even if it takes a lot of time. Okay, good. Well, thanks for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you.